Let's try it again. Oh, look at it. It's 555, five, five, everybody. Um, discard. Okay, let's try it again. Live. Live. Let's see if that works. Frankie, who was about to sit on you? <laughs> oh, my head's cut off again. If I try to lift it, there we go. Ah, all right, here we go. I did it. Okay, everybody, welcome. Welcome to Healing with Love. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to do this for you guys today. Um, so we're starting this. It started at 555. Um, had some technical difficulties, but we've worked that out. Um, hi, hi again, Marla. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you for joining me. Um, of course, Frankie's here as well. So good seeing you guys again. I'm super excited to do this 66 portal. Um, it's a very powerful number numerology. It gets a bad rap. I mean, the number 666 gets a bad rap um, because we have been programmed to believe that it is an evil number. The number, you know, the number six is evil. And the reason being is because it's such a powerful number that, um, People just, they, you know, and I don't want to say people tried to take away your power or take away your knowledge, but that has been the consensus of this, this, uh, this earth. Um, but we're shifting from that. We're shifting now to, to freedom of, of expression. We're shifting now to truths being revealed. Um, even like, the CIA documents, right? They're all being released now because it's like, well, at some point they had to tell us the truth about what's happening and what's going on. And I really don't like how this camera um, over here flips me. So it's backwards, but that's fine. Um, the you, the Instagram one does not. So what are you doing? What are you going to do? Okay, so let's talk about the number six. Um, we know the number six represents... A lot of things, right? It represents family. It represents balance. It represents compassion. Um, in tarot, it's the lovers. So it's a very, it's a very, and it represents Earth, by the way. Um, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons are what this planet is built on. Uh, so it represents Earth and our strong connection to Earth. And I think we have been taught for a very long time to not care about mother earth as a living being the way that we not necessarily us and you and me but the way that some people um i guess they don't care about earth if they, you know they pollute the oceans and you know the things that are happening with earth it's very it's very sad but anyways i digress so we're going to go six plus six, right? We're in the six, six portal. So this is a definitely a good day. Um, it's not only the six, six portal. It's also new moon in Gemini um, on Thursday, which is the planet of Jupiter. So it's about luck, money, manifestation. It's a good day to gamble or do anything of that nature. Um, this thing keeps, oh, there it goes again. Okay, let's do that. Let's fix that. There we go. Is that better? No. Better. <laughs> I keep messing it up. Okay. Um, hi, Roman. Oh, hi, everybody. Okay, I've got I've got some people over here. Um, Ivan. I've got Divine Spark within. Oh, hi, everybody. This is the most I've had in a while. So, uh, six plus six, right? It's the number twelve. Twelve disciples. Twelve astrological signs. Very powerful number, but it reduces down to the number three. And three is the Holy Trinity, right? It is. Um, darn. Darn this stuff. Uh, it's the Holy Trinity. It's creativity. It's creation. Um, two, two parts merging into one to create a third part, right? Uh, it takes two people to create a third person. So creativity. So it's definitely a great time to be creative. Um, six plus six plus 2024 would be the number eight. So um, that would be the number 20. So today is a good day for partnerships, spiritual partnerships, because it is a zero in there. So the zero represents God, angels, the universe, um, the higher power source. 
So today is definitely a good day for spiritual partnerships, spiritual connections, coming together with others um, on, a, on a spiritual, in a spiritual way, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a great portal. And like I was saying, in, in tarot, six is the lovers. And it, it's not only about loving others, but loving yourself, nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself and all that good stuff. Okay. So now we're going to get into um, some of the channeled messages that came through, um, that have been coming through. I've been getting a lot of different things, but a lot of it has to do with earth and what earth is going through. And the fact that this is the six, six portal, it's like the perfect time for, for these messages to come through. So let me fix this again. My apologies. I was not expecting it to not work. It, it was perfect earlier and I don't, I don't know what happened. Okay. So I guess I'll just be cut off over here on this one, on the bottom one. Okay. So we have repeating numbers that have been coming through the past month have been 1010 was coming through a lot. And as we know, 10 is the Phoenix rising from the ashes, a spiritual rebirth. Um, there's been a lot of things happening with the sun, a lot of solar activity. Um, yeah, Lady Lulu, I have actually, um, I have YouTube underneath and then I have the Instagram up top. So I'm getting a little cut off on YouTube, but they could, they could still see me if I kind of get down like this. <laughs> okay, so a lot of things happening with Earth, a lot of transitionings. I, I keep seeing polar shift, polar shift. Now, whatever that polar shift means, whether it's an actual shift in polarity of the Earth or it's... Um, a shift, like changing of the guard, like things changing. Um, it almost feels like upside down world, right? Um, we've had this feeling back in 2020, like upside down world, and I'm getting that feeling again. So a feeling of upside down, like I really can't explain. I just, I kind of just see the earth shifting. Um, the ocean is heating up. There's a lot of um, fish that are being... And, and there's something going on with the gravitational pull as well and the, and the magnetic sphere because um, a lot of fish are, are beaching themselves. Um, and I'm feeling it's because they don't know where to go. Um, if, if, if people are messing with the magnetic sphere, the, the magnetosphere or sphere, whatever you want to call it, um, the magnetics of Earth, that's going to create problems with birds, with animals that migrate because they don't know. And if the water is heating up, they're trying to escape that, that warmer water. Um, but it's kind of like a frog or, you know, a frog in water, right? When it heats up, it doesn't know that it's being heated up. It doesn't know it's, it's being boiled alive until it's too late. So, yeah. So uh, repeating number 1010, so I'm seeing some sort of a transformation, some sort of a, like a phoenix rising from the ashes. I've been seeing a lot of fire um, and a lot of water. So whether that is a fire sign or a water sign or the actual manifestation, I've been seeing um, a lot of earthquake activity. I've been seeing a lot of volcano activity. And that's I've been seeing that for the past six months. If you see my stories, uh, I've been seeing a lot of that happening. Um, a lot of CME energy coming in. So the CME is, if you're familiar with... Um, coronal mass ejections from the sun, they, they affect our DNA in a certain way. So, um, they, you know, some people are saying it's a bad thing because it messes up the electro electromagnetic field. And yes, it can disrupt electronics and stuff, but we are also um, energy. And so it has a very strong effect on our physical body, on our soul, on our spirit, on our energetic field, our auric field. Um, so it's a very, um, very interesting time to be alive. And I think a lot of us decided to come here for this very reason, to experience this. And I think a lot of us forgot because upon re-entry, we forget, right? So I want to get into that. I want to get into, this is not going to be my usual like reading. This is going to be me talking about things that I've discussed before, um, but I want to compact it into kind of one video because it has a lot to do with earth and what is happening with earth. And so I'll also do cards, of course, I'll get into that and the channeled messages, but I really, really want to talk about things that are happening. And I posted a video um, 
talking about last life on earth. I don't know if you've guys seen it, but in this last life on earth, it just talks about, let me grab my water. Um, it talks about oh, how some people, this is their last life on earth. And some people, they, they really want to get off this planet. They're like, this is it. I don't know what I was thinking coming here. This is like the Sims. You need, you need money for everything. Like, and the way that the economy is, a lot of people are just, they've had it. They, they, this is not what they signed up for, right? We signed up to come to this earth to kind of elevate and illuminate people. Um, but in the process of doing that, many of us who are considered light workers or this is our work, um, we struggle. And I feel like we struggle in order to be able to impart this information to others. Um, I never, you know, I know a lot of people would say people should just get a day job or something. Right. But, um, if I had per se a day job, I wouldn't have the time to, to do this in the way that I do it in the, in the depth that I do it, because my focus would be on that. And I'd just come home and I'd be tired and I, and it would just be groundhog day every day for me. And I wouldn't be doing this. So a lot of us doing this struggle because, we want to be able to do this. We want to be able to help the planet ascend in frequency. We want to be able to help others. Um, I wish that I had somebody that knows what I know now when I first started this journey. And I know a lot of people are where I was 10, 20 years ago. They're there right now awakening and they don't know how to navigate this. And I know there's a lot of people out there doing this, um, but a lot of people that are actually doing this are kind of just... Um, how, how would I say? I don't want to say regurgitating things that they've heard, uh, but a lot of people are kind of just picking things and talking about it, but not really having the experience of it. And so without the experience of it, they don't understand it on a deeper level. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, if you are adamant that this is your last life, it probably isn't. And that means that you're working on, th on things still. Because I was very adamant for a while that it was my last life. And then I came to the real, when I had my NDE, um, then I understood it differently. And I was like, oh, I'd come back. I would come back. Um, it's different. Like you just, you would want, you want to come back. There's things that you can do on earth that you can't do in an energetic form without a body. Um, sure. You can just be around floating energy, but you can't do the things that you want to do here on earth. So it's a gift. And sometimes we forget that it's a gift. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, there's other things that come up. Uh, repeating number 222, representing partnerships. Sit down, Frankie. You want to get down? Oh, my God. She always wants to just sit up here, but she can't. Say hi, everybody. I'm doing a lot better now. Okay. So um, repeating number 222, partnerships, um, having patience. So have patience with yourself, have patience with others on this journey because it's, it's, um, it's not easy. And I think everybody is doing the best that they can with the tools and the knowledge that they have. Not everybody is on this deep spiritual journey like you and I are, right? Not everybody is here for that. Like I was explaining earlier, a lot of people have jobs, they have things, they have kids. They don't have the mental or spiritual capacity to, I guess, awaken, if that's, if that's the word I want to use, if they don't have the, to ascend, like, that's not a priority for them. Like for them, like my job, my kids, I got to keep a roof over my head. That's their priority. But um, I think all of us should, should want to be better and want to do better. Um, yeah. So uh, repeating number 111 today, I got a lot of 111 today and I got ICU. And I'm seeing I see why is my hair wet? Um, I'm seeing I see you as in like I see you, but I'm also seeing I see you like intensive care unit. So I was picking up on that. I was seeing somebody drowning. Um, so this and I've I've been adamant about this. I posted a couple stories about this. I've kept seeing somebody drowning. So I kept I kept saying, if you have children or you're going to be near water be very careful with your children or your animals or um, even adults, you know, for whatever reason that's popping up. I keep seeing a lot of water. 
Um, I keep seeing like um, out of breath. Um, that's, a, that's for somebody specifically. But I wanted to share it just in case. I don't want to like regret not sharing it. That's always my one thing when I share these things. I want to make sure that the message needs to get to whoever it gets to. And I don't want to regret not saying it. So I say it. I hope it's just something that's metaphorical and not really meaning. Um, okay, I was seeing Anubis. If you guys are familiar with Anubis. So these are the channeled messages here. Anubis, the um, Egyptian god, the, the dog, the black dog. He, he appears in the form of a black dog. And he appears in the form of um, crows, blackbirds as well. Um, he is here to weigh your heart against a feather. Um, so when we ascend to the afterlife, he is there to see how much work you've done on earth, on your heart, how much, how much grief are you holding? How much, um, grudges are you holding? How much anger or hate are you holding? Um, because that is a very heavy thing to carry and you cannot fly, per, you know, metaphorically fly with a backpack full of baggage, a baggage full of crap, right? So it's, it, you need to look at what you're holding onto and what you are, what you haven't forgiven. Uh, it, you know, it could be yourself. It could be a family member. It could be a friend or an ex-partner, um, somebody who hurt you. Uh, when two, when one person forgives, two souls are set free. Okay. Um, so Anubis was coming up a lot. Uh, solar activity, of course, we talked about that. The CME is coming through very strongly. Um, they are creating vivid dreams. So a lot of you might be having vivid dreams. Uh, I keep having time lapses, time jumps. I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this. Um, I feel like sometimes I'll feel like three hours pass and it's like been 30 minutes. Or sometimes I'll feel like 30 minutes pass and it was like three hours. So there's some something going on with time and, and the, the jumping of time. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. I keep seeing look up. So if you have not been outside to look out in nature and see what's going on in nature, highly recommend it. Let's see. There's a lot of things going on in the sky, not just the, the cloud formations, but the sun activity. Um, there's a lot of cloaking happening right now in the sky. And you can tell because these in nature, there are no straight, absolute straight lines. There's no, everything is if, as you know, like the Fibonacci sequence, right? Um, you know, round, <laughs> spherical or, you know, whatever, but there's nothing absolute straight line. And, um, there's a lot of clouds, if you notice, that are absolutely straight. And so you'll know that that's something being cloaked or mirrored. And there's a lot of things going on with the sun simulator. If you guys are familiar, China already has one. So there's no reason why we should, wouldn't have one. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, what else? Telepathy. Um, so I, this is a, a, I was just talking to somebody, somebody messaged me on Instagram and we're talking about telepathy and how, you know, a lot of people are afraid of telepathy because they don't want, um, people reading their mind. It's like a, you know, like private thoughts or private thoughts. And this is the thing with telepathy. Telepathy is not, I'm reading your mind. <laughs> Look at me. I'm in there. No, it's, it's transmitter and receiver, transmitter and receiver. And you have to trans, you have to consciously transmit the thought to somebody and they have to consciously receive it. So it's not like invasion of privacy because it's, that's not how it works. Um, so it's always imperative to remember that when, when you're doing telepathy work, right? So remember that sender, receiver, sender, receiver. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's how telepathy works. I'm also seeing a lot of like remote viewing. So if you're not familiar with remote viewing, that's where you can see places, um, 
miles and miles away from you. So like you could even like remote view the moon, you can remote view Saturn, you can remote view anything. And this take, this is a, a talent that takes a lot of discipline. Um, it is possible. I've done it before. So, and I know there's a lot of documents that came out from the GOV <laughs> that talk about um, them learning how to remote view and having um, people that, that they teach to it and it is possible. So I'm seeing telepathy, remote viewing, uh, somebody wanting to learn more about it. Um, when I, how I learned was I was giving a manual from, I don't want to say the name, <laughs> but it's a, it's a GOV agency. And I was given to that. I was loaned it. And that's, I read that and that's how I learned how to do it. It takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of discipline. So but it's very helpful when you're looking for something, when you're wanting to find something, you're wanting to see something. Okay. Um, so telepathy, um, seeing gravity, some something happening with gravity, the gravitational pull, something is going on with gravity and the earth's electromagnetic sphere. It just, that keeps popping up. Like, I don't know if it's weakening or what's happening, but that keeps coming back up. It keeps coming back up. Like it's asking me like, don't forget that. Don't, don't forget that. Like, hold on. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I was seeing uh, the, so there's the planetary alignment that just happened. There were six planets in alignment on the third and the fourth. So, you know how they say the stars aligned or the planets aligned. And so this is your time. This is your time to fulfill your dreams or your desires of what you've been wanting to do. And I know it's been difficult for a lot of us and but we have stayed strong and we have stayed here. <laughs> we haven't left, right? We're still trying, we're still going, we're still moving. Um, planetary alignment. I was seeing um, lying, like um, the little, little lies, little white lies that we tell ourselves. So I was explaining to somebody um, on the other side uh, you know, in the 5D, etc. There's no, there's no lying. There's no manipulation or anything like that. So that's just something that we do here in 3D Earth. And it's people just do it every day. Like I'm running late. Oh, I stuck in traffic or whatever. Um, even those little things, it messes with your integrity and, and the way you operate. So it's almost saying like, in order to get to where you want to get to, you have to like walk with integrity. Um, so we were, I was talking about, I did another video about a coma. Um, and it's this post that I saw years ago, probably like 10 years ago. And in the post, it says, I don't know where this message is going to reach you in your dream, but we're all waiting for you to wake up. And I remember I had, I had been in a car accident and around that time I had a dream that I was in a coma and that my family was, and it was so vivid. My family was around me and I could hear them talking about taking me off life support and what are we going to do? And um, just making the final arrangements for it and how they were going to do it. So that always stuck with me. So when I saw that post, it was like, wow. And when I had my NDE, that popped up again. And it was almost telling me in some con in some place on earth, I am in a coma somewhere and they're trying to wake me up. So I'm me here in this earth that we're in now, but there's another, you know, cause there's timelines and dimensions where we are somebody else. We are us slightly different. And in that place I'm waking up. So a lot of us are waking up and you can have, you have a lot of vivid dreams. You have a lot of, um, Almost feels like a lucid dream. Even your daily waking life feels like a lucid dream. Okay. Um, 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 um. I talked about poltergeist, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, trust your intuition. I was getting that and not judging your intuition. I, I keep feeling like you get a nudge, you know, and I would say, you're, you know, it's your intuition when you don't second guess it, when you don't really judge it, that's your intuition. Like, it's just a knowing. It's a feeling. It's called claircognizant. I just know. So when you're judging it, you're not. You're either judging the message that came through, or you're judging yourself. Like, is that real? So it's 
time to start trusting your instinct and let go of the judgment of could this be real or not. And then finally, um, I saw a secret admirer. So I saw somebody who has like a muse. So I don't know if, if you are the muse to somebody else or somebody is your muse, but they inspire you to create or you inspire them to create. But I was seeing that. I was seeing somebody watching somebody's social media, getting inspiration, um, being inspired. And that came through a lot. There was a lot of things that came through. Okay, so that's the channeled messages. Yay, how long did I, how long did that take? 20 minutes, 30, almost 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to start with um, 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 the songs. So we're talking about how it is wish fulfillment right now with um, Jupiter. It's a Jupiter day. Today's Thursday. And with a new moon in Gemini, it's about manifesting, manifesting what you want. What what do you want uh, to manifest this this Gemini season? And the first song that came through, which is interesting because I was going to wear, I was going to wear this Alien Ant Farm and it got too hot in here. So I was like, oh, I'll just throw something else on that's not as hot. And the very first song, of course, was Alien Ant Farm and it was wish, like make a wish, right? So I'm seeing wish fulfillment, somebody wishing for something and that coming to fruition. So if somebody's been wanting something, that's going to come to fruition. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So wish. Number two was, um, and, I, and I've got this message a few times, something about high, going higher, chasing a high, going higher, keeps lifting me higher. There was like four different songs with that like in the title. So I'm seeing somebody going higher, um, whether it's somebody who's just smokes a lot of pot and they're getting really high or somebody ascending in frequency, like they're, they're going higher and higher. And it's almost like, oh, you know, it gets a little scary the higher you rise, right? Almost like, you know, when people go up in a, in a hot air balloon, I'm seeing a hot air balloon, um, it gets a little scary the higher you go. Like, is this balloon gonna pop? What's gonna happen? So and a very cool. Um, message with that and I, it said that it was by the artist alma and alma is your soul so your whole your soul going higher raising higher higher in frequency so you're going higher in frequency um number three your love keeps lifting me higher higher your love keeps on lifting higher and higher so your love keeps lifting me higher. There it is again. And so uh, the highest frequency, of course, in in the vibrational scale, I don't know if you've ever seen the scale, it's like a cone, and it tells you what's the frequencies of everything. Gratitude and love are at the top of that cone. So the more that you you walk with love or you, you talk with love, um, the more that you are love, then the higher your frequency, right? And it's hard to be in that state of love when the world, what's happening in the world right now, it's like, it's sad um, because you you want to be able to do something and it you can't and it's hard. And so it's hard to stay in that high vibrational state when you have something so traumatic going on because we are all one. We're all a collective. So we feel um we feel that. And so I was talking, I, I'm not sure if it was the 4-4 video, one of my last portal videos, I discussed how, I discussed, um, oops, karma, karmic completion, karmic, repeat, repeating karma. Um, and I, and I specifically said in that reading, if you're, if you don't break the cycle, you're just repeating the karmic cycle. If you don't break it right now, this is your opportunity to break the cycle. If you don't break it, you are going to repeat that cycle. And so what we're seeing in, in the Middle East is a karmic cycle repeating. Um, what happened, you know, to Israel um, by the Germans, they are now doing to the Palestinians. So 
it's a karmic cycle and it's and it's got nothing to do with the humans it's a, it's the it's all political and those people in the military the ones that are making this happen don't have anything uh you know it's their fault it's not anybody else's fault so it's always the military and the higher ups that create these wars that nobody wants and we're all we can do is watch it's like you know they've already broken so many um geneva convention laws um and i don't want to get deep in that but i wanted to say that aspect that it is a karmic cycle that is happening and and it's hard it's hard to watch because we know the outcome because things are cyclical that's like astrology right it's cyclical okay um yeah and number four stop this train by john mayer and yeah you can't stop a train like it takes a long time for that train to stop um stop this train i want to get off and go home again i can't take the speed it's moving in and this goes right back to what we were just talking about of not wanting to be here on earth because of the things that are happening and it's like oh my god get me off this planet this thing is just this thing is going to crash and burn like get me the hell out of here um had a talk with my old man said help me understand he said turn 68 you'll renegotiate don't stop this train don't for a minute change the place you're in don't think i couldn't ever understand um so in that lyric he's telling his dad like i'm just i'm getting older i'm only used to being young and wanting to stop it and the father telling him no th that you with wisdom gained you want to continue you want to keep moving forward so um number five waves by dean lewis it comes and goes in waves um the freedom of falling so waves it comes and goes in waves and that can be grief that can be um karma uh, it could also be the waves, the CMEs that are coming through. I'm also, I've been seeing a tsunami as well. So I've been seeing a tsunami for months now. So waves. Um, number six, suffocate me, angel fish. And uh, for some reason, I was seeing a beta fish and like an angel fish, a beta fish. And one of the last songs was Muse. Time is running out. I think I'm drowning, asphyxiated. I want to break the spell that you created. So I'm feeling somebody feeling suffocated, um, whether it's with work or in a relationship or just life, that feeling of just going under. Um, number seven, Secret Admirer, my boo, Ghost Town DJ. Um, And that song is about a secret admirer, somebody watching you. So you might have a secret admirer that's watching you. Um, and I've seen my boo like ghost town DJ like boo. And I literally was just wearing a shirt yesterday that said something like a shirt my niece gave me about boo. Ghost. Haunting. <laughs> it was like a haunting shirt. Um, number eight. Oh, look it. So we were talking about your love keeps lifting me higher. And the number eight was your love, it takes me higher. So that's weird that we have like four songs that say the exact same thing. I think that's a first in my in my thing here. Um, your love keeps taking me higher. And that's by Sonique. Um, Overkill by Men at Work. Um, we're going to be friends by the White Stripes. I'm seeing somebody like being love bombed, like narcissistic love bombing. I'm not sure if you guys know what that is, but I'm seeing somebody like that might have been love bombed in the past and it was overkill. Um, no one knows by Queens of Stone Age. Maybe nobody knows about your secrets. Um, that keeps popping up. Secret admirer, nobody knows. No, nobody knows about how you feel. 
Uh, number 12, New Sky by Rufus DeSoul. And that popped up today at 111. And I keep telling everybody to look up, look up at the sky, look up at the clouds, because there's a lot of activity going on. The sky has like new colors that you haven't seen. It's when we ascend in frequency, let's say when we're moving from 4D, from 3D to 4D to 5D, you start seeing colors that you didn't see before. You start experiencing things you didn't see before. So um, number 13 was the song that I was like one of my favorite songs that popped up. First by Cold War Kids. First you get broke, then you feel sorry. Um, so we had new and first. So a first time of something. Um, doing something or being first at something. Number 19, Iris, Goo Goo Dolls. Once again, that song is about a secret admirer. So we had a lot of songs about secret admirers here. Um, when I think of Iris, I think of the I, I see you. And in the video, if you're familiar with this video, he's got a telescope and he's watching. He's watching from like a very far place, like the moon or something. He's looking down. So I feel like satellites and stuff watching Earth being watched, which is nothing new, right? Um, number 20, Electro, and I have a lot of songs. I was, I was doing a lot of stuff today, so I have a lot of songs, but don't worry. I'm going to run through them. Electrify Me by, um, Kimmy Minor, Proud as Sun. So there's the sun again. White Stripes Twice. So I'm seeing stripes, white stripes, like a striped shirt or a striped chair or a striped towel, but I'm seeing white stripes. Um, Clarity by Zed. Blue Light by Mazzy Star. So I've been seeing the color blue a lot. Blue Light is what, um, a lot of cities are implementing blue lights and what blue lights do is they mess up your circadian rhythm. So definitely if you're on your phone, always put the, you know, the orange tint on it. So it doesn't mess up your eyes. Um, 24 little secrets by passion pit. So once again, secrets, those little lies, little secrets. Um, I actually, Oh, darn it. Anyways. Um, privilege by incubus. And I had, I had did a screen grab of the lyric that I wanted to share, but, um, and that talks about the privilege of being here on earth, but it talks about wanting to escape and the doorway to escape the, your reality, your world is through your heart. Because once you transform your heart, everything around you changes, you evolve and change. Um, don't let me be misunderstood by Nina Simone. So I feel like as you ascend in frequency, people don't understand you anymore because you're on a different wavelength or frequency. So it can be a little harder to, to connect with people, connect with others. Um, and then the last song was Muse. Time is running out. So there's the songs. Now we will get to the cards. Everybody's favorite part. I want to see how I have some cards that I wanted, some new cards that I wanted to share that I hadn't used before. It was just a really cool deck. Comes with like little things, little booklets, little. And I want to thank Tam for this because Tam gave me this a while back. Really cool deck. Wow. Okay. Here we go. So we're just going to see what's coming through the 6-6 six, six portal from here now until 7-7. Seven, seven. What is coming through? Oh, nice shuffle. If all cards shuffled this way, oh, it would be heaven. Only messages of love, light, and truth to come through. Here we go. Oh, whoa, whoa, a lot of cards. I don't know if I want to take them all. Oh, well, let's just see what they are. Um, oh, I love that. Okay. God of worlds. God of waters. Oh my gosh. Portal for the healer and portal for the unraveling. Wow, look at these cards, guys. I've just got to show this to you. If you look at it, it looks like radio frequency. So I've been, 
I've been on a um, radio frequency kick. I've been doing a lot of um, uh, tone tone meditation. Not a lot. <laughs> I honestly have not been very disciplined in my meditation. Um, but look at that card. Let's see how like the the frequency is hitting her. So we go nine, ten, queen, king. And this reminds me of, um, what's that painting where he's screaming, ah, where he's got like the ghost guy and he's like, <gasps> got to show it up here. And I, I really love this God of Worlds because it's like I was talking about polar shifts happening and it looks like, the, you know, some like somebody's ripping open and the water's coming through. It almost reminds me of there's a conspiracy of the Milky Way is a crack in a firmament and water seeps through there. But that's very much what that looks like. And then we have another one, God of Waters, God of Worlds and God of Waters. And these are not, I don't think these are tarot. I think these are like their own. Oh, here we go. God of Worlds and God of, here it is. Okay, I guess it's a game, but I'm just going to use it as a tarot card. I guess it's like a little game or something. Oh, these are cool. Oh, here, here we go. So we had Portal of the Healer, number 10. Um, the portal for the healer washes over you with energy and love. Um, when this portal opens, people are often met with worries of inadequacy. To be a healer, you must find a way to let go of the fear that you are not enough. If you can't love yourself, who are you going? How are you going to heal others? And upside down, which actually it did come through upside down because I flipped it for you guys. Um, when you are ready for this portal, you will notice how infectious your light can be. You have the power to lift the people around you. You do. You have that power. And then we had Portal for the Unraveling. These are really, this is a really cool deck. What number is that? Nine. Oh, I think it's a dark card. Um, there is Beauty and Chaos. It grants you freedom to roam. If this portal is opening for you, do not take it as a warning, but more as a fact of life. Time is something you will always seek to control and never will. It will eventually unravel and you will have to learn that you all you can do in this situation is do your best. The portal of unraveling can lead to the unknown and transport you to wild and chaotic places. And then we had God of Waters. God of time, God of synchronicity. Oh, look at that. I hope I get that. God of waters is the omnipresent and flow with both force and grace. Um, so the downside, which I don't, I don't remember if it was upside or downside, but duality is the word. Um, the upside, the God of waters represents someone who understands the duality of water and can use it as a form of healing. So I always say this. Um, I always say, I tell people in meditation and in, in this kind of work, drink water. Water is a conduit. It allows things, it allows energy to come through you. Think of yourself as like a cup of water and a straw comes through. Um, and the energy comes, like, it just goes through you. You're like like a Taurus field. Speaking of water. <laughs> okay. So oh I really I really love that message on that. That's really cool. Um 
So, and I was talking about tsunamis. Uh, we were just talking about tsunamis. And the god, the god of water says, the downside, if this card comes up, it may be symbolic of the catastrophic power of water. In one towering wave, it can wipe out villages. And I know that uh, Texas right now is, like a lot of places are flooding right now. So for that to pop up is no coincidence. And we had God of Worlds. I think I read, did I already read God of Worlds? There it is. So duality, wholeness, the God of Worlds is the king of all physical magic. If he pops up in a reading, it is symbolic of your connection to the earth and your oneness with yourself and others. Um, it is the downside. It is important to understand that the world around you is affected by how you walk through it and its existence can be temporary. It can crumble at any moment. The upside, the God of Worlds represents a bold character with earth moving presence. They overcome their obstacles no matter what and in doing so often find success. This is the first time using this little deck and I really like it. And I think I want to continue and see um, what else pops up. Just a really cool deck. But so far, my channeled message talked about tsunamis. Um, and that, that um, very much looks like a tsunami. And that very much looks like a tsunami. <laughs> and that very much looks like a tsunami. So, very interesting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, and I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say while I was reading this and I just didn't say it because I was like, yeah. Um, but I was gonna mention the number five because my I just posted five, 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 five. A lot of fives came through yesterday and five represents magic. And this, the God of Worlds represents magic as well. So here's number five. And five represents freedom. It represents adventure. It represents transformation and change. It could also represent challenges. Um, so portal for the wind. So there's wind, a lot of tornadoes, a lot of a lot of um, things happening on Earth. Like, what's it called? Uh, what are those called? Hurricanes and tornadoes. So change. Um, the portal for the wind of change. There. So that's the word I was looking for. The the wind of change. I've been hearing the word the wind of change all month. Like whether it's the song pops up or somebody says it in a TV show or like somebody, I see it on a sign. I'm like, what the wind of change, something is happening. Something is, something is changing. I keep seeing that changing of the guard. Something's happening. Um, the portal for the wind is summoned when you are ready to turn a new leaf. The downside, maybe life has been feeling stagnant or maybe you just aren't sure which direction to go in. You've opened its portal in hopes of change, but instead it blows wind in the wrong direction. Float with the wind if you can fight it, if you can't fight it. Um, I was seeing that, I said that earlier, I said floating. I was talking about letting go of baggage um, in order for you to float. The upside, the wind can blow you blow in your favor. Know that change is on its way. Sometimes all it takes is a little wind to lift a big spirit. Wow, that's really cool. I like this deck. I think after I'm done with this reading, I'm going to kind of go through it and see all the cards and kind of learn it. Portal for the Light Giver. This is absolutely a beautiful card. Okay, so look at, okay, I'm going to start up here and then I'm going to move it down here. It looks like somebody having a spiritual awakening. So I'm seeing somebody, you know, arms out like the, it almost looks like um, the Da Vinci man. Portal for the light, and it's a diamond. Number 10. So there's a number 10 again. So we do have two 10s popping up. And I was talking about 1010 10 during the channeled messages, the number 1010 10 popping up a lot. Um Portal for the light bearer. Where is it? Portal for the light. Oh, here it goes. Why wouldn't they put all the reds in the red? 
Um, victory. Ooh. Uh, the portal for the light giver is called from a place within. The downside, it can be extremely difficult to summon this portal. At times, it can seem nearly impossible to see the truly intoxicating light we have to offer ourselves and others. This is you and realizing your light and your power. And sometimes we can't see our own light and power. Um, people sometimes see in us what we can't see in ourselves. So it's a reminder. The upside, the, this greatness stirring inside you is your spirit and it is flowing with light. Feel the power of that and embrace it. Hold on to it and trust that it is there. If you can learn to feed it, you can call upon this portal even when darkness seems to be tearing the world apart. That's really cool. Just the image itself, it's like an explode like an explosion, like just absolute spiritually reborn. The light surrounds him. It almost looks like his aura, his aura, right? It's it's so bright and surrounding it we have all this red and the red represents it can represent a lot of things it can represent passion love right um the root chakra but it can also represent fear anger our primal urges and instincts and you know things like war and greed and you know all these things that are going on in the world it's like he it, there's red all around him but he's it, his aura is like this beautiful bright white light and it, it can't affect him because he's got, it's fortified. I'm hearing the word fortified. Your love keeps lifting me higher. Portal for prisms. Oh, I love this card. I really love this deck. <laughs> I love it. There's a pyramid coming out of the water. And I, I, I was seeing, I was just watching a video recently where they were talking about pyramids that are underwater and the way that the earth is kind of moving there it's almost like Lemuria is coming back up to the surface so I'm kind of seeing that there's a lot of crystals around and the water is red like the Red Sea which people could miss you know they could say that's like apocalyptic times right uh, so number four, four is all about building solid foundations for the future. It's about teaching and learning. Is that portal for prisms? Yeah, portal for prisms. Structure. Uh, the portal for prism captures light and returns rainbows. The downside, this is an illusion portal. It's made of crystals and shines when the light hits it just right. But if you try to open it at the wrong time, you might just be looking at a rock. The upside, when the light splinters into the color, you'll know you've hit on the foundation of some key energy. It celebrates the magical light within us that is our grounding force against the darkness. When we give structure to this foundation, it can in turn help others. Really cool. I almost want to just do a reading. Okay, I'll, maybe I'll come back to these cards. I want to get into. I want to get to some other ones. Um, so you know, through the portal, through this month, there's going to be a lot of a lot of things happening with nature. There's going to be a lot of things happening with us and our energy. You know, our energetic field. Portal for the healer. This is a great time to heal. And I was saying that six six is you know, Anubis coming and saying, Hey, what have you, what unresolved fears are you still holding on to? What, um, what things, you know, what needs forgiveness? What grudges are you still holding? What anger or resentment are you still holding? And it's time to heal those and let it go. Your love keeps on lifting higher and higher. Your love lifts me higher. Whoa, oh, that flipped over fast. Oh my gosh. Um, look at this. So look at these two cards. I'll, pu I'll put them up at the top in just a second. Um, look at the rays coming out and the rays, they both have like rays coming out of them. And the renewal card is spiritual rebirth. So this is like, I've been through a traumatic time and now it's time to relax and just relax, <laughs> right? It's like, you know, when it's time for you to like 
not vacation, but just like I've struggled for so long. Like now I'm just going to chill. I just want to chill. Three men dressed like Ghostbusters. Yeah. So if you watch the beginning of the reading, James, I talk about ghosts. Ghosts came through in the songs. So a renewal of your passion. Right. She's meditating. When I always say when you meditate, arms out this way because we're open body uh, to allow to receive. We are a receiver. Right. It's like a radio. Um, we receive and we transmit. And so she's meditating there and she's renewing her passion. Like, what does she love? Like she's it's almost like she's being visited by the herself when she was younger and she's like you lived all your life and you didn't get to accomplish what you wanted to accomplish what have you not what are you still not accomplishing what do you still want to do i'm seeing a book somebody writing a book and, and it's almost like the notebook like so when we get older, some of people get dementia. It's like reading their stories back. I'm feeling like the notebook, like reading their stories back to them to help them remember. I, I've been getting that a lot. Remember, remember, remember. Um, I wasn't going to read the, I just want to read the little quick synapse of renewal because I feel like she's, it's like, it's spring. Like she's renewed. I'm almost seeing like a vow renewal as well. This is another beginning. Yes. Yeah, so, so like with the spiritual journey, uh, their awakenings happen in waves. So remember the song that came through by Dean Lewis, Waves? Um, it comes and goes in waves. So this is like how the spiritual journey is. Like I was just telling my friend this the other day. My friend Lisa called me and I was telling her, I go, I go th with months through months without any, anything, without any, like, ex I don't know, like poignant signs. Yeah. I see synchronicities every day. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, but I don't get like poignant things, but this past month I've been getting like, whoa, boom, boom. Like, whoa, things are like, it almost feels like my first awakening. And so I'm feeling this, this buildup that's going to happen on the 8-8 portal. I feel like from now, 6-6 six, six to the 8-8 eight, eight portal, a lot of people are going to have, like, if you've already had an awakening, you're going to have another another level to it. Um, geranium. She has geranium surrounding her. You're being offered a chance to awaken to a new life. Wow. You may need to deepen your roots and anchor yourself by taking stock of what you would like to create. This is time to start again and grow a strong foundation. Um, and I like the inquiries. Am I positive in the face of change or defeated? Am I ready to step into the new me? Um, feeling in the dark, key ideas, unexpected blessings coming as well. Regeneration, awakening, and fortune. So I'm seeing some, some sort of uh, money coming in based on your passions, something you're passionate about. Okay. And then we have passion. And it's really interesting. If you look, it's almost like it's the end of her life, right? And she, this is like the angel that comes at the end of your life to guide you to the other side. And she's being re reborn, renewal. Because if you look at out her window is what's over here, oh, over here. That's really cool. Um, what was that uh, passion? Princess of Amber. So are my daily actions supporting my real passion? What am I willing to stand for? When I had my awakening, that was one thing that was, you know, the life review with my ND was, what did you stand for? What did you fight for? You know, and that's something that when I came back in my body, I tried to do more of, like I tried to advocate more for things that were important to me. Um, 
And because, you know, you want to stand for something. What do they say? If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. So following your passion, being authentic, taking a stand for yourself, being acknowledged. Um, sometimes uh, during this awakening, you can feel ostracized from family. And let's see. Oh, uh, James says, I don't usually feel so much intense energy from watching a video. I made sure that I meditated today to give a good reading. I really felt really strongly to do this today. I haven't done a live like this in a while. So I, I don't think I've been live on Instagram in a while. So yeah, let's continue. Uh, thank you though. Thank you. Thank you, James. So um, strong feminine energy, a happy outcome. So there it is again. Passion, bravery, royalty. Really cool. So I'm seeing the sacral chakra and the root chakra, letting go of your fears to follow your passion and what you're passionate about, starting that, getting back on it. Um, I, you guys already know, I wrote a children's book a long time ago. I never got it published. I never got the artwork done. Um, I just, it's a calling. It's a calling me. <laughs> so if anybody knows any artists, look at, and creation. Look at that, guys. Hi, Shakara. So look at, I really love this. I mean, she's got this beautiful amethyst in her hands. Uh, and we were just talking about creating. And there's passion. So create, what, what are you creating? What is your creation? What do you want to create? What do you want to leave behind? You know, we don't ever have to leave anything behind for anybody. But sometimes... Um, it's nice to leave something everlasting that will help humanity behind. But we don't have to. Our ego tells us, do it, do it. But we don't necessarily have to. Thank you, Roman. Oh, thank you. How do I give that a heart? Okay. I think, yeah, I, I've only gotten... Um, you know, the super chats, I've only gotten that maybe three times in all my history of doing uh, YouTube. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Roman. Yay. So let's, let's get to creation. So creation, um, this is to me, it's a neutral card. So it's not any of the chakras. It's just neutral. Um, but I usually equate that one to like the crown chakra. And here it is. Let me just show you the card because it's a really powerful imagery. Show it up here. This beautiful Native American woman. And she's got like this amethyst in her hand. And I love that she's got the amethyst in her left hand because the left hand is re receiving, right? So she's receiving infinite wisdom and knowledge. The amethyst is a very powerful crystal for your intuition. Um, so I will guide you to see your muse. Oh my God. How many times have I said the word muse today? Um, we even had the band muse as the, as the final song, as one of the first songs and the final song. So I keep seeing the muse. You, you are somebody's muse. Um, they create because of you. We don't realize every day when we walk that we, we, ins we, we just think we're just living our ordinary life, but you can be inspiring somebody just by existing, just by being you. Uh, you can say a kind word to somebody, or you can create something or whatever, and that inspires another person to take action it, to create. Right. Oh, James, that'd be great if you know any artists. That would be fantastic. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. So um, out of confusion, uh, I really love that it, the card before it in the book is confusion. And it's like, you're coming out of confusion now. You're like, I, it's time for me to, um, to now be this powerful creator. So your path is an artistic one. Express your love in a tangible art form. It is time to make decisions. Personal inquiry. Am I waiting for someone's permission to create my life? What do I need to see in order to claim 
my own gifts. And the key ideas are opening to magic. We were just talking about magic with the other cards. And we were talking about the 555 came through. And I said, abracadabra, you create your own magic. Abra, abracadabra, I want to reach out and grab you. Um, lasting transformation, uh, in the divine feminine, um, awakening your creativity, finding your muse, owning your gifts. And so that's what this card is all about. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I want to just read the legend on this. In a time before history, the shaman walks the earth, bestowing artistic talents on a select few. One day, she rests under a birch tree. Hey, says Birch, I want my muse too. Birch entertains she shaman for a long time, singing and telling tales. The she shaman smiles. My great friend, you have had your art all along. She vows that from then on, she will, she will give everyone their own gift. To this day, she shaman has never left us. We see her inside every creative work. And that's the divine feminine, right? So what is the divine feminine? The divine feminine is the right side of the brain, which is responsible for our ability to create. Um, that's where our intuition, our inspiring ideas come from, right? And our left side of the brain, uh, left side of the brain implements what we saw with the right and makes, takes action. So I love that, uh, the divine feminine energy opening up in a lot of us, right? Getting back into creativity. Me doing this is honoring my creative side. I really love that card. And it reminds me, so there's a, a, a the Hopi tribe. Um, they have a lot of great prophecies. And the reason that they're able to prophesy so well is because everything is cyclical. Hi, Frankie, what are you doing? Why are you being a rascal? Look, at she wants to come up. She wants to read cards. Okay. What card do you want to do? So, yeah. Um, and they have a, a, a prophecy of the blue star. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, but it talks about that this blue star is going to, appear in the sky um, quickly. And on my birthday, May 18th in Portugal, we had, say hi, look at they saying hi to you. Say hi, Carmi. Um, they had a blue, that blue shooting, whatever that came through the sky. I forgot that I wanted to talk about this. So a lot of orb energy coming through, a lot of orbs, people seeing, catching a lot more orbs, a lot of colorful orbs. Um, yeah, the video meteor girl where she's like, ah, but there was a lot of other videos that caught it and it almost looked like doomsday, right? The sky just lit up blue and they said it was like a meteor and it, because it was made out of, uh, you know, mercury or, or I don't remember what element it was made out of to make it turn blue, but that is what the prophecy for the Hopi tribe talks about. They talk about the blue star Kachina coming through and um, the Mayans also talked about something very similar. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. May 18th. So it happened on May 18th, which is very interesting. Uh, 18 is nine and the nine is the from chaos comes clarity completion, right? Sit down, mama. Franklin, why are you desperate? Are you going to sit right here? Oh my goodness, this dog. Okay, here. There you go. Jeez. She don't let me work. Okay. Erica! Hi! Oh, say hi, Shakara. Hi, Erica. Where's baby? This is what happens when I go live. She just is fussy girl. Okay, go. See you later. Ooh, bye. You hear her tap, 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 tap it in, tap it in. Expansion. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. I really, I, I really love where this is going. Okay, because we had a lot of earth things happening with these cards. I feel like this card channels a lot of earth things happening, but these, this is expansion. 
And we were talking about your expanding your creativity, your creative ideas, your passions, expanding, expanding your work, expanding your like what you want to do. It's the throat chakra, your self, your self-expression, your ability to communicate, right? So, and she's got the whole world in her hands. Like she's got the whole world in her hands. She's got the whole wide world in her hands. Um, and there's the wind again. Look at he's blowing the wind of change on them, um, which is very powerful. And then she's got the miracle in her hand. She's bestowing a miracle. Thank you, Roman. Yeah, Frankie is, Roman says, Frankie looks good. Glass is doing better. She is, uh, I just took her to the vet. So thank you to everybody who's donated to Frankie's uh, GoFundMe. Uh, she just got her last lab result and it's looking good. So we lowered her atopica dosage. And so um, we're gonna see how she she does with that. Hopefully we can keep, keep it low and every other day instead of daily because it's a pricey medication, I'm telling you. Um, so I'm seeing you expanding your creative, your creativity. I'm expanding a business, expanding something that your passion, right? Um, I keep seeing somebody taking like a retreat, going somewhere. This card always reminds me of a retreat, some sort of a retreat, like a yoga retreat or like a, some sort of a retreat. Um, I'm going to the Integratron soon. So when I go, I'm going to do a reading there while I'm there and I might go live while I'm there. So I'm not sure that's going to be at the end of the month. So I'll keep you guys informed. But the Integratron has powerful energy. It's so amazing there. I absolutely love it. Somebody's prayer is coming to true. And which is interesting because I was saying with the expansion card, she has a miracle that she's bestowing to her. Uh, and there's the prayer being fulfilled. So somebody, and I love that there's a city and then there's like the country, like a city mouse and a country mouse. It's the city mouse and the country mouse. Um, but a prayer is being fulfilled. And look at, this was the card that was coming out with it, joy. And you're gonna feel a lot of joy. Look at the two lemons, um, making lemonade out of the lemons or lemon pie or lemon meringue, some sort of lemon. But I really love, it's something about this card. It looks like a lemon zest. You know, like when you put a zest in a drink, it looks like the little, like when you, when they do it fancy for a cocktail seen a fancy cocktail. So there is, both of these are solar plexus chakra. So I'm seeing somebody finally having the confidence to move forward, expanding their awareness, expanding their consciousness, expanding their business, expanding their creativity, expanding their network of friends, expand, it's just a lot of expansion, but in a positive way, because we had all these cards are all positive cards. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the balance again. And there's the, the Anubis we were talking about weighing your heart against a feather, right? So I'm seeing that forgiveness, letting go of grudges, letting go of whatever, and moving into um, a higher frequency. Like definitely seeing people just moving into higher frequency. And I feel like what's happening in the world around us, you know, we can't control it. And the only thing that we can control is us and what we are ourselves and how we react to these things. So I'm not sure why that's popping up again, but it is, I think it's a very important thing. So what are we healing during this portal? What? Are we healing during this portal? Six six portal until the seven seven. Whoa. Dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. I love it. We're ascending. There's the heart chakra. And look at the stairway that's going up the stairs to the very heart center. And then we have the light coming down from the bottom ascending. So I, that's the repeating message during this reading is your heart healing your heart. Uh, Anubis, the bottom of the deck with that card, Anubis weighing your heart against a feather. How heavy is it? I remember I had a dream 
many years ago, when I first started this journey, I think I was 20, when I, 21, 22. Um, and I had a dream and it was my, it, it was me and my sister and we were somewhere, something, something happened and we kind of died and we had to go to heaven or something, right? It was like heaven. And they, somebody came and told us, well, I said, well, I'm bringing her with me. And they said, no, you can't. She had a heavy backpack on. And they said, no, you can't, you can't bring her. Um, her backpack's too heavy because, and the backpack represented, representing the baggage that we carry, right? All the things that we carry, the grudges, the, the pain, the heartbreak, whatever. And I didn't have any baggage to carry. And so I had to make the tough decision to leave her and go. Uh, and so she stayed, I, I ascended. So I think that's kind of like the, the heart work that we need to do. Um, but dream work, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. On TikTok, we've been doing this teamwork thing where we have to, um, you know, we try to get follows because you want to reach a certain number of follows so you can get into the creator program on there. It's it's the toughest thing I've ever done in terms of social media. Getting 10,000, I mean, getting 10,000 followers is, even on YouTube, I've only, I only have like 6,000. So getting 10,000 followers from people that are, it's a lot of kids, I guess. You, you know, but I, they always tell me to go where the kids are because kids are waking up and they need what I have to offer. So I'm trying my best there. So everybody's like, teamwork makes the dream work. And that popped up. But I'm seeing dream work as in like um, having vivid dreams. You're having vivid dreams as well. We're seeing the 9-9 nine -nine there representing the completion of a cycle, the ending of something, right? Let me see if I have my little, oh, here it is. I want to see what the animal is. I've totally spaced. Jade. I have a friend named Jade. Here it is. Okay. So we have the animal totem is the jaguar. So dream work, uh, Mayan culture, we were just talking about Mayans, uh, Asia, astral travel, um, acting on your dreams, suppressed emotions expressed in dreams, limitless self. So it says, Jade only comes into life when we need to know that anything is possible and we are truly limitless in our ability to manifest. Now is the time to live your dream into realization, whatever it is. Take steps so the rest of us can see it. This is the most sacred stone of Ascended Master Seraphis Bay. He may be calling you. Wow. So look at Jade is a stone that adjusts with the ages, constantly renewing its presence. A fact recently made obvious at 2008 Summer Olympic Games when it became the only substance other than metal that has ever been used on Olympic medals, symbolizing living the dream into realization. I never knew that. Wow. That is very powerful. Um, it's a great crystal for bringing in money, that's for sure, um, because it, it's a it's a venturing citrine, but they're all money like to bring in extra income. But it's great; it's a great crystal for teamwork and dream work. So um, a lot of people can put that under your pillow if you want to have dreams at night. Hi, Renee. Hi, Cruz. Okay, so I love Jade. I love that it's dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, I'm seeing a lot of um, dreams happening in your dreams, a lot of things happening in your dreams. Um, did I read Prayer and Joy? No, I didn't, but I want to. And I'm going to because I can. So, and I love that they're both uh, solar plexus because the solar plexus is our ability to manifest things. Our, ability, our willpower to manifest things into reality. We use all the lower chakras to manifest. So we can use um, the root chakra uh, because the root chakra is our, our lack. So when we're lacking, we work on that. But it's also our connection to earth and our earth provides us. So we're going to start with um, prayer first. Cool lemonade. My prayers are answered. Um, so the key idea is all prayers are answered. Um, following where life leads, being of service, 
fulfillment. The keywords are clarity, destiny, and authenticity. And one of the songs was also clarity. So clarity by Zed. I love that song. Um, yeah, so the whole thing is about if you were sidetracked from your path, you're jumping back on it. And I feel like that's me right now. Um, I usually don't resonate with my own readings, but I feel like I feel like I am resonating with a couple of things and I jumped, I like, I don't do the lives as much as I, I, I want to, because I don't, I don't have a place to do it, but I'm house sitting for my friend right now, my friends, and they allowed me to, to watch their dogs. And while I'm here, I get to do some lives. So I'll be doing a six, six. And then, um, there's another one that I wanted to do next week. And then I'm going to be doing the Integratron, which is at the end of the month. So. Yeah. Okay. So prayer coming true. Um, and then we had joy, which I really love this because it's a sunflowers. And there's a, there's a whole thing happening with sunflowers right now. If you guys are not um, familiar with what's happening with sunflowers, they are not facing the sun. Like they don't want to face the sun. And I'm not sure if it's all sunflowers, but a lot of people are posting videos of their, you know, farmers where they're, you know, of course that they, so there's something going on with the sun that they're not wanting to face it. And I noticed this as well with my dog or and animals in general. They, my dog doesn't want to go outside anymore. She does not want to go in the sun. She I usually have the window open so she can sit by the window. She doesn't want to be near it. If I take her for a walk, she's hot in like two seconds and it's not a hot day, but there's just something about the sun and the, the way that the sun is acting right now. Um, yeah, so the sun. Uh, joy. Let's jump and see what happens. Quantum jump. Yeah, let's jump and see what happens, right? So the universe says jump. Um, it's like a trust fall, right? Like I, I got you right? Jump into it. And so we had a lot of creative ideas, expansion, jumping into something that you want to do. So a conduit of jo for joy, detached from joy, higher purpose, profoundly impacting lives, improved health. Um, what can I do to invite happiness into my life? Right? Being present is not the same as truly experiencing something. Beautiful. Okay, making lemons out of lemonade. I really love how she's got her arms in the air, waving them around like she just don't care. Oh, Renee, yeah, sunflowers. I, I love sunflowers. There's just something joyful. I think they were my first favorite flower. Tiger's eye, I am the tiger, mm, mm, mm. rising up back on the street. So I love that we've got tiger's eye and jade because both of these are very powerful in manifesting abundance. Um, this is also self-confidence. So if you've been wanting self-confidence, um, I actually chose to wear tiger's eye today, which is very interesting, but um, so we have the number eight, eight here. So I'm seeing money coming in for somebody, um, personal power in action. And if the, if the animal totem is not a tiger, I don't know what to, what to say. <laughs> it's gotta be a tiger. Tiger. Du, du, du. Goodness. Tiger's eye. There we go. So the animal totem is a bull interesting like the like um like a taurus which would be me essential oil star anise i love that so the key words are personal power in action drive having the drive having the confidence to do something right having the courage to do it kundalini awakening uh, i'm seeing travel uh and travel to asia because we've got asia right next to it and who is lord lanto i've never heard of lord lanto but here we are. So tiger's eye, very powerful. So we have a lot of uh, solar plexus activity happening. So I feel like you're being more confident in, in what you, what you're doing. 
I feel like, you know, kind of like, like with me with TikTok, it's hard for me to talk on camera if, you know, because usually I, you guys just see the, the deck and just see the desk. You don't usually see me. So I'm learning, I guess, you know, and we're all learning to do things a little differently than we're used to. So I feel like maybe you're learning to do something different, getting out of your comfort zone, having a little more confidence to do it. Smoky quartz. Oh my God. I was just thinking of smoky quartz today. So we have two, look at eight, eight. So the eight, eight portal I was just talking about, and we have gold and silver, the masculine and the feminine, divine feminine, divine masculine, left side, right side of the brain. Smoky quartz, eight, eight. Um, smoky quartz is a great crystal for meditation. If you want to move from alpha to beta state um, quickly, I, when I first started meditating, that's the crystal that I used. And it really was very powerful and allow not only for grounding, it's great for grounding, but for moving from alpha to beta, like back and forth, like you're just, I'm, I get in a meditative state very fast with that. So highly recommend it. I didn't bring my, all of my crystals this time. I only have a few. So um, silver, the divine feminine, gold is the masculine. So we have um, self-acceptance, um, physical embrace as divinity. I love a, I love um, a hug because it I, I try to give people 20 second hugs whenever I hug them because I know that the, the endorphins and the happy hormones come up. So physical touch. Grounding. Um, Feeling tired of life. Oh my God, look at that, guys. If we remember at the very beginning of the reading, we talked about feeling tired of life. Um, feeling tired of, the, not necessarily life, but the way that earth is, is operating right now. It's not natural. And so we fight it. Our body and our soul fights it. It doesn't want to be here uh, because it's not. we're not meant to live like this. And it was built, this, this system was built by the Rockefellers and all these people that, created what this system is now. So it took, a, took us out of nature, out of gardening and, and farming and doing all these things and made us dependent on companies to provide these things for us. So yeah, a lot of people feel like they're done with this. Like, give me the hell out of here. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so that's what this card is, is, is making me feel right now. Um, so I'm seeing a life change happening, healing, um, Osiris, which is great because we had Horus popping up and I'm seeing the rainbow serpent, which is the Kundalini energy. So we have two cards talking about Kundalini energy and the Kundalini energy moves. When I had my Kundalini awakening, I'll explain how it felt. I felt like I was electrocuted. I felt like I was just sitting on the chair. I was on my computer. I don't know what I was writing, but I felt like I was electrocuted, like uh, like electricity hit me. And it just, I felt the energy from the tailbone go from the top of my head down to uh, like all through my body and then up from my body back up to the top of my head. Um, I, I thought I had died. I had, I thought I had died. And then that moment was like, everything was super magical, super weird. And it's been a journey ever since. So. Um, so the animal totem is crocodile, alligator. I was just talking about crocodiles and alligators. And I've told the story. You guys heard it already. Um, you can go find it in, my, in, in one of my videos where I talk about the, the Egyptian initiation for the mystery schools. Um, talks about crocodiles and alligators in that. But... I actually want to talk about, I want to see what the crocodile fits in here. No. Alligator. There we go. Alligator, crocodile. Take your time to digest what you're now learning rather than rushing ahead to pursue further education or gather more information. Wow, how poignant is that? You need to be very protective of your personal territory and assertive about setting boundaries. This is a time for renewal and new beginnings as you emerge from a dark period of your life. Be sure to gather all the facts and look at the situation from all sides before passing judgment 
making any decisions or taking action. It's an important time to honor your ancestors in any way you choose. Beautiful. I really like that. It says what it says about um, take your time to di digest what you're now learning rather than rushing ahead to pursue further education or gather more information. I think when we start this journey, we we got so much information coming at us that we want it all now instead of integrating what we have just learned, right? Great, great deck. I'm going to try to do three of, three of these. Brazilianite, being flexible. I love this. Um, so it's all about flexibility. Not only flexibility in your creative self-expression. Um, I'm also seeing somebody stretching like the body flexibility, but being flexible in your ideas, in what you're doing. And it really goes with the alligator where it talks about not rushing, right? Being flexible. Uh, green crystal. So we're looking at the heart chakra there. This is actually like a green... It's, t it's almost like a green, lime, lime green color. So the heart chakra and the solar plexus. So we do have a lot of solar plexus stuff happening. Oh my God. I was just talking about crocodiles and alligators. Cocoite, which is always my crocodile card. And this is all about sexuality and the root chakra. Letting go of any sexual hangups you may have or any sexual... Um, traumas, healing any sexual traumas that you may have and honoring and embracing your sexuality and not having any, letting go of any guilt or shame that you may have based on sexuality, right? We are as humans, sexual creatures. So root chakra. So we have a, a couple root chakras. Oh my God. And we were just talking. Wow, I, this is like really amazing because I was just talking to you about the initiation, the, the mystery schools and rites of passage, which is the card that I always talk about the Egyptian initiation mystery schools. So I'm seeing um, a rite of passage, uh, the mystery schools. I, I feel like you're going through initiation phase right now. And so the initiation phase is about letting go of any fears that you may have, right? You guys remember the alligators, in order to get to the other side, you have to let go of fear and fear is what stops you. So when I was going through my awakening, I was, it, you go through hell in, in the awake. It's not, it's not fun. <laughs> the beginning is not fun if you're scared because you're shown the dimension of hell because there's, it, it exists. It's a dimension that exists, right? We created it. We made it happen. So we go through hell, but nothing can harm us or hurt us. And that's where I almost got stuck. And so when people get stuck there, they become super religious um, because they see evil. They see darkness. They see this. They see that it exists. And so they get scared and they stop. So they stop their spiritual journey dead in their tracks right there because now they're scared. And so I, I almost stopped there because I started getting really scared, but everything you want is on the other side of fear. I had continued the journey, even though I was scared. And so a lot of people have the subconscious fear, generational trauma of, of the fear of damnation. So that is a lot of people's number one ingrained, inborn fear that they've carried from generation to generation. So when you face that fear, I was like, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. And so a lot of people don't, they stop. So let's take Doreen Virtue. A lot of a lot of readers, they start awakening and they hit that plateau of, of where they they see hell and they stay there. Now they're they are born again Christian uh, because they didn't know that they needed to get past that fear. So it's an initiation. I hope that made sense, but that's what this card reminds me of. It is the divine feminine as well. Um, so we have a lot of divine feminine energy tapping into the right side of our brain. So the moral of the story with that is everything you want is on the other side of fear and uh, whatever that fear may be, whatever that subconscious fear may be. And we got black, look at you're protected. So like I was telling you guys, about, you know, in the mystery schools when 
the teachers or the, the, the gods, the teachers that are, have the initiates, they tell them, um, trust us, right? You are protected. And those that did not trust that they were protected did not make it across the cavern of alligators and crocodiles because they were scared and they didn't trust that they were going to be protected. But those that did trust got to the other side and were bestowed esoteric knowledge and wisdom and the, mis the, the answers to the universe. You're protected. I love that card. Oh, what is next? What is, oh, I want to do these. Oh, wait, I wanted to do these. <laughs> I guess if you guys saw my desk right now, if you have ever gotten a reading from me, a private reading, you know exactly what my desk looks like right now. I'm like, what is this light that's shining right? It's like a column of light. If, if you're watching um, on YouTube, there's a column of light going directly down my head. Okay, guys. Um, so we have secret temptation, being led astray. Um, which is interesting because one of the songs that came through was, it was, um, doo -doo -doo. it was Little Secrets by Passion Pit. And it kind of reminds me of that. Um, and this also reminds me of what we were just talking about with the, the religious stuff, right? Um, people feel that, you know, the tarot is wrong or, you know, they, everything that they're doing is wrong, wrong, wrong. It's a temptation and I can't, I have to stop it. But you have to overcome that fear. Don't be led astray by, um, what is it? False idols, religion, etc. Don't be led astray. Boop, boop on your snoot. Light codes at the bottom of the deck, which is interesting because we had another card earlier um, that had the light, light codes, light stuff. Meditation improvements require persistence. And um, that's what I told you guys at the beginning of the reading. Um, I said to meditate <laughs> because if you wanted to, you want to hone your intuition, you want to hone your gifts. Meditation is required. And I love that it's like they're ascending. If you look at them, they're ascending. Twenty-seven. So number nine from Chaos Comes Clear. If you look, if you look closely, you see how they're they're meditating, and then now they're floating and they're ascending. Really cool. And so I love that there's a dove that's flying next to them because it represents that peace, that stillness that we get when we meditate. Um, what this is my reminder to meditate. Start meditating again. It's been a while. Um, but once you're open, and look at all the orbs too. Like they all have their own like oh, bubble force field of protection. That is really cool. But the dove's representing peace. So like that's how you find your, your own inner peace. You can't find it out, out exterior. You, you know, you, the answers are inside of you. Oh my gosh, I love this because uh, for my for YouTube, um, I just grabbed a random card to do the thumbnail, and it was a an owl. And here's the owl again. Ta-da! Mindful wisdom, create inner harmony. So we're gonna read the owl in my book. Elemental P. Meditate in silence. Oh, and we got the meditation card. 
uh, and in darkness for a few minutes each evening for the next few days and see what is revealed to you. Be alert to any deception on the part of others. Yeah, whether they're aware of it or not, and look closely behind any guises that they may wear. Yes. So where's the card? This one. Don't be led astray, right? Um, this is a particularly right period to tap into the fount of intuitive wisdom that's available to you. Quietly observe your environment, watching and listening for signs and omens that will give you answers to any questions you may have. Now is a particularly significant time for prophecy, and you will see, hear, or feel events before they actually happen. Your most creative cycle now is the night. So set aside time in the evening to work on any projects. And yeah, so we were talking about projects, creative projects. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, back over here, the card that was talking about uh, tapping back into your creative talents, your creative abilities, creation. Working at night might, I, I, I used to be a night owl, which is interesting because we have an owl here. I used to be a night owl. And just recently, I, I think when I hit 40, I became a morning person. Um, and I go to bed really early now. So I don't know if anybody else is having like, it's like a, a polar shift of, of who I used to be. But the night is very powerful. And uh, a lot of a lot of things happen during the night because of the moon and our intuition is more vibrant because the moon is there. So yeah, let's continue our little thing. Okay. I did three. Okay. We're doing three of those. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. I want to do these. So this is what I was going to do. Frankie. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's like a it's like a double entendre because dream work is dream state, but also with other people making your dreams come true. You've been wanting to make your dreams come true. Thank you, Roman. Love and light, everyone. He says. Oh my gosh! And we were just talking about look at and there's Gemini, the twins. We were just talking about your intuition, your sacred vision, right? We had this beautiful woman here with her sacred vision. And here it is again, the twins. Um, choose to forgive in order to heal. See the light in all. Remember that love has no boundaries. Forgiveness. Twins. Twin flames. Oh, oh, oh. I just had... A little booklet. <laughs> I'm always losing it. Um, I love that it's got the Vesica Pisces uh, on right there, which is interesting because it's on the card as well. And so we were just talking at the very, very beginning of the reading about the number three. And to me, the Vesica Pisces is like that because it's the two merging to become... Um, the third, right? Hi, Estrellita. How long have we been going? I'm at 145. I'll stop at two. I'll stop at two hours. Oh, so we're, we're the Miriam, the twins, Geminis. I love that we got a Gemini card. What is the Miriams? I don't think, has anybody heard of the Miriams? I've never heard of the Miriams. And I think I've maybe pulled this card one time in my history, but I love that there's all these roses surrounding her because the roses represent the Holy Grail. They represent um, esoteric knowledge and wisdom that is bestowed. So the temp Knights Templar, they protect the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is a rose and that rose represents the divine feminine and esoteric wisdom and knowledge and intuition and, and sacred vision. So... The Miriam, which means beloved, are twin flame angels who come as one. They are mirror images of each other. Um, they are the angels who appear to Mary Magdalene in the tomb of Jesus after his passing. As I was just talking about Jesus. <laughs> These angels spoke directly to Mary and helped her move beyond grief so that she was able to communicate with Jesus once more. Um, there is a real opportunity for you to move beyond grief or grievances at this time. The Miriam are here swirling their holy light around you so that you can regain a sense of union with spirit. 
You are loved beyond words. Choose to see the light of God in everyone and everything and to love without boundaries. Honor others and honor yourself with your sacred vision. You are in a space of deep healing and forgiveness. Choose to see the light of the world will help you grow even more. Oh, I, that's what we were just talking about this whole reading, right? We were talking about Anubis weighing your heart against a feather. Uh, what grievances are you still holding on to, right? Yes, Estrita, it's been a, a it's busy June. Yeah, I'm excited for our Integratron trip. I was just telling everybody about, about that. So, and I promised them a reading from, uh, a reading from there. So, <laughs> um, I love that card, the Miriams. I almost wanted to like look at the etymology. Focused intention. Diana. Dirty Diana. Oh. Come on. Um, I really, we were just talking about the moon and look at, there's the moon and she's in the night. And so Diana has a, she has, um, I keep seeing focus. She has this, this thing, what do you call it? Oh, the bow and arrow. She has the bow and arrow, right? And she can, she, she can shoot anybody. She go around shooting, but she doesn't. Just because you have the power to eviscerate somebody doesn't mean that you do. So Diana, focused intention. So that's also about manifestation. So what do you want to manifest right now? This Gemini, right? We got the Gemini card. This Gemini new moon. Um, that's today's Jupiter day. So luck, money, manifestation. What do you want to manifest? Dirty Diana. Oh. Come on. I cannot hit Michael Jackson's notes. I am sorry. <laughs> um, Diana is the Roman go moon goddess of the hunt. She is also known as Artemis in Greek mythology. So she's always got animals around her and she comes out at night. She only comes out at night. Look at, we have two cards talking about night. Um, so it's almost like saying it's, you know, if you are a, an early bird, maybe start changing into the night into a night or staying up a little bit later than usual and working with night. Um, so move forward with unwavering faith, knowing that the universe is supporting you. So Diana is helping to awaken your divine ability to manifest what you desire. It says deserve, but I don't like to use the word deserve because um, you don't have to deserve something to get it. Sometimes you just get stuff because you manifested it. Uh, any fear is only a reminder that whatever you are working on or through is an important issue for your growth. Your focus is strong now and will be particularly powerful at the full moon. So from now until the full moon, you may be aware of night owl tendencies. Look at that, that we just talked about the night owl and there it is again. Um, set some time aside to do deep meditation, receive guidance. So if you're, this is asking you to be, a, maybe you are a night owl. I'm not a night owl. Maybe it's telling us to start being a night owl if we're not night owls. Odin, look at this, psychic insight. We have, not only do we have sacred vision, but we have psychic insight. And Odin, um, your third eye is open. See truth for what it is, follow your intuition. Wow. Well, and there's all the birds. So he's like the god of the afterlife, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He's got heterochromia, the two eyes, different colors. I noticed that. Um, it looks like there's a stargate behind him um, with this writing on it. Is who is Thor his son? Thor Loki? Is that is that his kids? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Night owl, yes, night owl. Okay, um, Odin is the Norse all-father god who's revered to present day. He's a powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing god. His twin flame is Freya, Friday, which is tomorrow. And like her, he has a raven totem. Yeah, I was seeing the blackbirds. I was talking to you guys earlier about Anubis. And Anubis also uh, rep is represented by blackbirds. Ravens, crows, blackbirds, black dogs. The story goes that he surrendered one of his eyes at a mystical spring called Mirmir so that he could gain, oh my God, Mirmir, Mir, 
Miriam. Mir Mir. Wow. Um, so he could gain wisdom of the ages. He's a strong but somewhat wild character who helps us reawaken our natural psychic instincts and open our third eye so we can look beyond the physical senses and into the spiritual realms. He also helps us recognize that it is okay to have insights into what's happening next. After all, we are the creators of our path. Odin guards the runic alphabet too and works closely with signs, symbols, and omens. So runes, that's what's uh, behind him. If you look closely, there's runes. You are being encouraged to look beyond what your physical eyes are showing you. Look within and follow your intuition or psychic visions. You may want to plan ahead at this time. It's important to keep your mind and energy focused on the best possible outcome. There will be signs and symbols from the light to tell you that you are on the right path. Be aware of winged beings gracing your path as a wink from Odin and, a, and light keepers to say that they are honoring your work. So you might be seeing a lot of black birds uh, coming around. So, yeah. Margo! Hi, Margo! So let's continue. Ooh. Franklin... You're going to fall from there, girl. She thinks she's a cat. Bottom of the deck, true love, Guinevere. And if you look closely, they're very similar to Miriam. Look at the same colors, same flowers and roses. Wow. So I'm seeing somebody having love coming because I keep seeing a secret admirer. I saw, I don't know how many times I see Secret Admirer at the very beginning of the reading, like four or five times. And here it is again, which this card, the romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. So if you've been wanting to propel your love, like maybe you already have a partner and you just want to have reignite the flame, this is the card for you. Or if you're not, if you're single, then great love, right? One of your... And I think she's the, we were just talking about the Knights Templar and she's from that same era. So it's very fascinating that we got one of your, after that whole Knights Templar, Holy Grail conversation. It's almost like everything that I'm saying leads to it again, uh, like piggyback. So I got one card and then that card talks about what that card was talking about. And then that card talks about what that card was talking about. Like beautiful alignment. So. Um, romance is not an outmoded concept, far from it. Romance is the time-honored precept of merging with the divine at its, as it manifests within another human being. Romance is also playfulness, which heralds springtime, flowers, and new life. You needn't be in a partnership to evoke romance, however. You can manifest it for yourself through laughter, surrounding yourself with beauty, and indulging in luxurious treats. Romance is the life force of the universe and is a worthwhile goal indeed. So the meaning of this card is your soulmate relationship has arrived or is arriving soon. Uh, there is a renewed passion in an existing relationship. Um, your romantic needs aren't being met and you must take steps to alleviate it. Yes, we must take steps to alleviate it for God's sakes. So uh, she's the Celtic triple goddess, has ancient roots preceding Arthurian times when she was known as Gwynefar. In her original form, her name meant white one or white phantom. And she was a powerful goddess invoked for both fertility and as a bridge to take the dead to the afterlife. Um, during the times of Avalon and King Arthur, she became Guinevere. She ruled over the land. Um, legend holds that her heart really belonged to Arthur's cousin Lancelot. So today she helps us ensure that we enter into partnerships with our true love and not settling for anything less. And she assists in keeping that love alive. Mm. Guinevere, you better be on point, Guinevere. Um, you are a channel for divine healing powers. Each shell. Purification. It's time for a cleansing detoxification of your mind and body. If you've been wanting to detox your mind, body, or your surroundings, like your house, now is the time, like the end of spring cleaning before um, summer comes. I love that um, it's sur she's surrounded in water. At the very beginning, we got a lot of water cards. And here's water again. And we see the Kundalini awakening. The rainbow is wish fulfillment. Um, the Kundalini awakening rising. 
She's got a cup is overflowing, which means emotional fulfillment. She's very peaceful right now. She's in a peaceful state. I feel like that's me right now. It's a very peaceful state. It just inspire like I really it just inspires me to get my own place because it just it feels so good to like have your own space and you know. That's what I'm manifesting next. In one place. Oh my God. You guys. We got the two best love cards in this deck. We got the Guinevere, which is the true love card. And then we have Isolt, which is the undying love card. And um, the love you have shared is eternal, regardless of the, regardless of the situation. <laughs> regardless. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Wow. <laughs> uh, when it comes to matters of the heart, here I want to show you guys. Just I'll keep her up. When it comes to matters of the heart. Your help is here. It's all around you and also inside of you. Your inner wisdom may seem quieted by any pain that you feel. Yet be assured that the healing you're undergoing is swift and efficient, and you truly are healing from the inside out. First, your heart must heal from its grief, loneliness, and any feelings of betrayal. The, this is the main message that's been through the whole reading, healing your heart of any grief, pain, heartbreak, people that have hurt you. This can take some time, so be patient with yourself. Treat yourself as you would any ailing person with caution, gentleness, and tenderness. Next, get yourself out into the world, not in a harsh fashion, but with outings to parks, forests, and such, which are essential to lightening your outlook. Nature is the great healer, you see. That's why I'm frequently amidst the flowers and trees. Although they may seem quiet on the outside, they're quite talk talkative when you breathe and simply ingest their magical tones and conversation. Yes, when you smell a flower... Um, it opens up your crown chakra. I say this all the time. I always recommend it. Uh, roses specifically. So um, love from your romantic partner is eternal regardless of outward appearances. You're healing from a breakup. You're healing from some other type of loss. Let go of old relationships to make room for new ones. The love that you send into the world is an important part of your divine purpose. Your deceased loved one is happy and sends you love. Aww. I'm dying love. So beautiful. Oh my goodness. That was just so pretty. I can't believe we got both of those. So there's just this love that transcends time and space. <laughs> this hair. There's a love that transcends time and space. And yeah. It is Lotus Ohms. It is on his way. Trina, Trina, Trina. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, 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 Marcy. Oh my God. I totally forgot about this. I was going to do a reading and I, I totally forgot it, but here it is. So I might as well just share it with you guys. So we got, so this card actually came out. We were just talking about the blue light that streaked across Portugal uh, that was all over the internet that, that happened on May 18th. And so this, I got this around that same time that that popped out and I had gotten all of these where they're looking, she's got the blue star that I was like, it's the same. So there was very, something very important about that blue flame that flew in the sky. So spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. So that flame for some people, that thing that streaked in the sky was an actual, it was like the awakening. Um, so a lot of weird things are happening after that. And they'll continue happening. Um, but I was talking about um, people having like a spontaneous, just random awakening. And that's what happened with me. I wasn't in a state. When I had my awakening, the Kundalini awakening, I wasn't practicing I wasn't disciplined in meditation. I wasn't doing anything at that time. I had stopped. 
So when I had my awakening, it was a shock to the system because I didn't, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't, I was eating horribly. I wasn't exercising. I was like, Bleh. and that's when I had it. So I always tell people to not worry about being so disciplined uh, because it's a spontaneous thing sometimes. Yes, you can kind of hurry it along, but mainly most times it's very spontaneous when you have these, um, these experiences. But um, so we have cosmic ancestors and awakened spirit desire to change. So there's definitely something happening, something going on. Um, a portal was opened. I feel like they opened that portal. When was the when they started CERN again? They opened a portal. Something happened. Um, and if you look at um, all the satellite imagery, there's a there's this huge blob that's in, and it is. I can't explain what it looks like. So we were just talking about how there's no straight lines in nature. This is like one of those things. It's like you see it moving through the ocean, through around. It's this huge blob. And it, it appeared after they turned on CERN again. So there's a lot of crazy things happening. I'm excited to see. Um, yeah, it was on the eclipse. It was on the eclipse. Yeah, I totally spaced. But yeah, it was on the eclipse. And if you look at this photo... It looks like an almost like an eclipse, and he's like looking directly at it. Move it down here. You guys see it down here? I got two things going on right now. I got YouTube down here and Instagram up there. But yeah, and I I, I said I wanted to read that the blue flame card because um, we talk about like is it who is it? Is it the Pleiadians? I know there's the blue avians, but the Pleiadians kept popping up. This, who is this? Rebecca Campbell needs to really learn how to organize her things in alphabetical order. <laughs> because, oh, where are you? Is this this card? No, is it? Yes, it is. Um, the blue flame. For goodness sakes, it's not. Well, 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 nope, it's not. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there it is, there it is. So spontaneous awakening, activation, integration. And I just realized that it was on the page and I just totally spaced. Anyways, this card is a, this is a card of awakening and energetic upgrades. Perhaps you're going through a period of spontaneous awakening, receiving visions and having experiences that are out of the ordinary. In the West, little is known about the process of spontaneous awakening and it can feel very scary when we're going through it alone. And I just was talking about this whole thing the last 30 minutes ago. Um, elsewhere, they can be seen as auspicious experiences with those going through them treated with tender care. The blue beings are thought to be activating beating beings with great potential for healing and upgrading our cellular structures. They appear in moments of extreme awakening, activating a physical Kundalini awakening and a deep cellular and DNA healing. Many people glamorize the awakening process, which I was just telling you was not glamorized at all. It was scary as shit. Um, in reality, it's much messier and more difficult than most of us believe. We must first let go of what we think we know for sure and how we make sense of the world. This isn't easy. The awakening process, even when it's spontaneous, takes a considerable amount of time to integrate. An awakening without integration can leave us feeling very ungrounded. If you're in the midst of an awakening, the process never ends. Treat this time as deeply sacred and give yourself ample space to ground and integrate the extreme changes you're going through. So when I had my awakening, I was explaining to you guys how it was like electricity going through my body. Like it went from the root, from the top down and then down up. And I didn't realize that I should have been ground. I should have went out and grounded myself. I was terrified. I was like, what is happening? Um, it was a very scary experience. And this is when I saw the multi-dimensions superimposed upon each other. When I saw hell, I saw all these dimensions. And I sh what I needed to do was go out in nature and ground my energy. And that fear would have dissipated. But I didn't know because I didn't know what was happening. And so this is why I do what I do to share it with others that are going through the same ex these experiences so that they don't stop. Because when you get stuck in the fear of, of religious dogma, 
when you get stuck because you're afraid of damnation, um, it's a scary thing. And so a lot of people get stuck there. So once again, Doreen Virtue, for example, a lot of readers have gone, gotten stuck in that, in that whole experience, which is sad. So all they really have to do is ground themselves in nature and, but they get scared. Oh, sad. Let's see. Um, Oh, yeah. Estella says, I've been feeling both attached and detached, kind of floating between the two worlds, not really practicing, but also very aware, just being. It's been weird. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been doing, spending time in your garden. Yeah. Um, I was just talking about that earlier, um, people straddling both sides. Like, you know, yeah, I understand. Like, I, I see synchronicities and signs all the time, so it's nothing, like, exciting to me, but this past month, I've seen things that I feel the magic again, right? Like for a while, I wasn't feeling any magic. I was feeling blah. And this is why I decided to do the reading today. Cause I, I felt really like really good, really good to do this. And, and it was nice to like have my own space to do it. And, you know, I don't have to put anything away. I can do another reading tomorrow if I wanted to. And there's nobody telling me what to do. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like a little kid, <laughs> but yeah. So I'm going to just do one more card and then I'm going to call it an evening. I've been on here for two hours now. So but yeah, a lot of people are having spontaneous awakenings. Let's see. Used to be scared about it, but not anymore. But very weird and strange. Yeah. So a lot. I think a lot of people are. See, like you, for example, um, those of us that are going, that have been through it, and they're going through it. Like, there's a lot of people that are finally awakening, and so that's why we we do this. That's why we we share because I wish that I had somebody tell me what was going on then. I wish I had somebody to walk me through it, guide me through it. And I would have gone through it much easier and integrated much faster. Uh, but I spent a whole lot of time being scared. <laughs> and uh, I'm really glad that I, I overcame the fear because I would have been stuck in the religion thing, uh, the fear of damnation, the subconscious fear of fear of damnation. Because a lot of us have that subconscious fear. It's genetic, we, you know, We've been taught if you do this or you do that, you're going to hell or doing this, you're going to get punished. And so we live in fear all the time of that. Now it's like when you finally get past that, you're, you've transformed. There's no going back. When you realize it's all an illusion and it's not real, um, the fear goes away. Oh my God. There's an elephant again. Listening. Are you listening? The universe is trying to speak to you. Are you listening? And the elephant is the no, it's 53 here, but in my animal book, it's the number six. And today's the six, six portal. And elephants represent to me compassion. You know, I want to read the elephant from my book. They represent family, right? Compassion, love. Oop. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I sound like Coco Melon. Make it a point to be of service in some way to somebody young, elderly, or to those less fortunate than yourself. Do not let anything stand in the way of attaining this goal that is so integral to your purpose. You have the determination and persistence required to overcome the current challenges that you're faced with. Trust your senses, and if something in your life smells bad, take the necessary action to do away with it. Remain loyal to those closest to you in spite of anyone questioning their integrity. It's a good time to renew your sense of connectedness to the divine. Yeah. It, my message for me personally was I needed to start meditating again. Um, I felt like, I feel like something is coming for the eight, eight portal. And I feel like I need to prepare myself um, energetically. So if you have been getting the sign synchronicities, whatever, to go out into nature, to meditate, to, to you know, go sit in your garden, like Estella's doing, um, I highly recommend doing that really grounding yourself in nature. So I had this dream one time that 
the earth lost all its gravity and anything, only what was grounded stayed. So like trees, you know, everything, animals, everything else flew off. And so it's a reminder to stay grounded deep into Mother Earth, right? And I, I'm seeing listening music. Look at the elephant is listening to music. He's remembering through music. Um, they say that when somebody's in a coma, that you play them music and it helps them remember. That somebody has Alzheimer's and they don't remember, to play them music and they'll remember. So I'm seeing musical memory. Musical memory, musical memory. Uh, I don't know what I did. Oh, here it is. 53, the number eight. So we have, um, of all the numbers that came through with the cards, we have eight, 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 eight. So I'm seeing abundance coming. Money is coming for somebody. Finances is coming for somebody. If you've been struggling, I mean, I, I that comes through a lot. And it comes through, like money will come in like increments of tiny increments, but it's still something to be grateful for, right? So be grateful for any little abundance that comes your way and the universe will keep giving you because gratitude is the secret. An open heart will hear the message. Um, when this card appears, you're being reminded that there is a time to speak and a time to be silent. Now is an occasion for listening. Pay attention not only to what is being spoken, but also to what is not being said at the moment. For the deeper message is not always obvious. Listen with your heart, not just your ears, and you'll find clarity. There's the word again, clarity. Clarity kept popping up all through the reading. Receiving the listening card is a fortunate sign and ensures a greater understanding of your circumstances. And then I'll do one more. Commitment. Oh, my gosh. Three, six. It had to be three, six, didn't it? What a beautiful card. I don't think I've ever pulled this card. So we went from eight to nine, ascending. Number nine. Such a pretty card. And there's a key right there. So somebody getting a key to something, whether a house, a car, a storage unit. A lockbox. Um, there's a star in her hand. Look, stars. There's a star in her hand. You have the key. You have the key. Uh, I literally, speaking of, I just locked myself out of here. <laughs> I, where I'm house sitting, I locked myself out. And I had no, I had no key, nothing. I didn't know how I was going to get in. But I got in. Um, a true Commitment is a responsibility of the heart, my mind, body, and soul. This is a good time to make one. Partnerships form. So it's a partnership is coming. Somebody's going to make a big commitment, a, a connection, a, something. So the commitment card also indicates a natural evolution of a relationship from its inception to a literal or metaphorical marriage. At the very least, there is a promise of fulfillment in some form. However, you must be conscious of what you're committing to. Be clear about the nature of your commitment and your responsibility to it. Others are more willing to enter into partnerships at this time. Remember that your partnership with spirit and the highest version of your own self will engage the highest self in another. Wow. A commitment. So we did have the true love card. We had the undying love card, which represents um, past life connections, right? And then we have this card. Look at, all, look at that. It's such a pretty card. I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. I like it a lot. Interesting. Oh, look at that. Yeah, key will be involved. Oh my God, that flew out. Whoa. Goblins. Goblins. A lot of people are experienced. So, this is what's happening with the Earth magnetic sphere, magnetic electromagnetic sphere. Sphere. Um, there. So the way that the light, we are only as humans allowed to see certain amount of light, right? And what's happening now is that now we're starting to see more than what we used to. So now people are seeing things that have always been there, like goblins and ghosts and you know aliens and whatever. They're starting to see it now because now we're able to see it um, because we are in a different frequency of timeline on Earth. So don't be afraid. 
and I'm seeing goblin garden, like gardens, because the goblin is in the garden. And it's number five. So I'm seeing some travel, uh, an adventure of sorts. Five is the number of travel and adventure and freedom. So freeing yourself. Um, fear is an illusion. Choose love today. Forgive yourself and others. There's the message again. So I feel like it just the, the messages keep repeating. Forgiveness. Letting go of fear. Easing your heart. Trusting your intuition. Um, spiritual awakenings happening. A lot of people are awakening right now. So, and remember, miracles can and do happen. Let go of negativity, it says. And we did get three, two other cards that were about miracles and prayers being answered. So if there's something that you've been really wanting, um, now is the time to manifest it. The 6-6 six, six portal is very powerful. From now until 8-8 eight, eight is a great time for manifesting something. So whatever it is that you want to manifest, it's definitely a great time. And um, don't let the goblins get in your way, right? There's always going to be some goblin out there who tries to like... Um, make you lose focus or, you know, try to put a monkey wrench in your plan. So be mindful of those people. Not everybody, sadly, not everybody has our best interest at heart, right? Sadly, we want to believe that they do. And I've been there where I thought everybody had my best interest at heart and I got trampled on because I was in, I was in a different frequency than they were. I was seeing the good in everybody. I was seeing the good, like, I, I would never do that to somebody, blah, blah, but they, um, just because I'm in 5D doesn't mean people in 3D are in 5D. You got to remember that. So there's always going to be some goblin there and you just have to be mindful. Don't be naive. Yes, we want, we want to see the good in everybody, but we also have to be grounded in reality and realize not everybody has our best interests at heart. Whoa. Oh my gosh, this card. So if you guys watched earlier, I had a card pop up. Let me see if I can find it. That's right here. Here it is. It's very similar, two cards. So that was the very beginning of the reading, one of the first cards I pulled. And we're closing it out with a very similar card. And this is to me, it, that looks like a, like the Kundalini awakening. So intensity, things are going to be intense. You're going to be noticing a lot of signs and synchronicities. You're going to be noticing things. It's going to get, you're going to feel like you're losing your marbles, right? But just know that you're not. Yes. Roman says, next time I go out for a walk, I'm going to hug a tree in the green belt. Absolutely. I, I always, when I take Frankie for walks, if I see a tree, I touch it and I say, thank you. Um, because there's just a lot of wisdom. There's, there's wisdom in these trees and they are there for us and we are there for them. So, yeah. Um, it reminds me of the lilac breasted roller. I don't know if you guys know that bird, the lilac breasted roller, but let me show you the lilac breasted roller. Oh, I forgot I wanted to use those cards. Well, I guess I ain't got nothing else to do. Lilac breasted roller. I think it was 30. Here it is. Oh, it doesn't have a photo. Here I go again on my own. I am determined to find it. Hold on. Ah, there it is. That's the lilac breasted roller. Tell me, look at that, look at that. Look exactly the same to me. Two different, completely different decks that have nothing to do with each other. Um, the lilac breasted roller dips and swirls. Peaceful reconciliation nestles in your heart. Begin this journey with honest communication, open heart and a joyful spirit for lilac breasted roller is the bird of peace. And I was talking about seeing peace in the meditation card. Um, are there words or actions that may have caused concern? Forgive yourself or someone else. There it is again. Um, whoever hurts you, 
it's okay to forgive. It doesn't mean that what they did is okay. It doesn't mean it's right. It just means that you don't longer have an energetic attachment to it. Lilac gives you uh, an opportunity to release all negativity and resistance you have carried around for too long. You may communicate this with your choice of divine prayer, healing words, or compassionate actions. What is most important is that reconcil reconciliation blossoms within you today. I'm hearing the Ho'oponopono prayer from Hawaii. I love you. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry. And so I figure now that I pulled um, this deck out, I might as well just pull a card out. Where are we going? <laughs> We're not going anywhere. All right. Let's see what we got. So, okay, this will be my, my last one. This will be my last one. Or will it? We don't know. Oh my gosh, the Black Mamba snake. Oh, I love this card. So oh, Black Mamba, I always think of Kobe Bryant. And Baby Mamba, his daughter, Gigi. Um, 11. We know 11 is about manifestation and the black mama snake to me is Kundalini awakening, shedding the old, uh, letting go of the past, letting go of things. Okay. One second, guys. Let me just put this on real quick. It got like cold all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So Black Mamba Snake. This is one of my favorite cards. It's Kundalini Awakening. It really is. And it's very similar colors. Look at that. Very similar rainbow colors. So you're going to have a Kundalini Awakening. You're going to have that, that energy, those energies just going up through you. And you feel it like it feels almost like you feel it at your root. You feel it like think of like a Kegel exercise if you're a female and um, a male. Think of it as like holding in your your urine when you got to go pee. Right. Holding it in. It's like that. That's the energy you feel as it starts moving up your body. Black Mamba Snake. Death of old ways. Ah. Snake is bringing you an opportunity to let go of old habits and beliefs that do not serve you anymore. What do you need to do to let go of to become who you were born to be? This card could be a signal that it is time to change what is not working. If you choose not to change this now, you may later experience more signs nudging you toward alignment. Life is always giving you confirmations. No matter how they come to you, the universe guides you in the direction of your true self. Be sure to listen to the message. Snakes cautions you to not step in the same river twice. You hear that? Don't step in the same river twice. So we know we got reconciliation, right? And so that you're thinking about like taking that ex back or you're thinking about taking that friend who hurt you back or you're thinking about going back to that job. Think about it first before jumping in. Don't jump without thinking about it first. And then I want to do one more. Uno más. Oh, <laughs> you guys. Look, we got another owl. We got the owl over here the other time. Owl. That's one of my favorite cards. Number 33, the magic number of enlightenment. Such a pretty card. And you see Anubis, which who represents Anubis to me at the very top. His head. So we're going to read um, uh, this one, and then we'll be done with it for the day. Owl. Uh, 
the inner shaman. And we were just talking about this, Estella. We were talking about straddling both sides of, of earth and the other side and just kind of being like in the center here. Like we know, but they, we know both sides exist, but we're just kind of like in the middle. Uh, shaman lives with his heart in two places. One lives within and the other invisibly extends through his crown of his head, resting high above his auric field. This dual heart energy connects you and owl to your spirit world and ancestors of light. Shaman's heart blesses you today in accepting that you are your greatest healer. When Al comes calling, it's time to tap into and trust your innate wisdom. Listen to the sound of a drum, rhythmically in tune with the beat of your own heart. Release the ego mind and become one with your true self. All of your answers live within you. Today is the day to embrace a nature walk, let loose with the tribal dance, or perhaps seek out a fellow healer to share in light work together. 33, the master number of enlightenment, 33, three plus three is six. Closing this reading out with a six on the six, six portal. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Um, I'm so very grateful. And if you want to watch the replay, feel free to go to my page. I'm going to upload it now. So thank you guys so much. Yay. Thank you guys.